Um, yeah, so it's my it's my very great pleasure to um, introduce our mini school speaker for the afternoon. So I think it's going to be two, two parts. So um, the speaker is Mihai Pao from the University of Illinois in Chicago. Um, and he's one of the people who has worked a lot on this similar method. Um, and so in his two talks, he's going to tell us about, again, singular metrics on push forwards of fluid canonical bundles and also applications to other Okay, thank you. To start with, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. And it's really a great honor and a pleasure to be here. And also, I'd like to thank twice for the very beautiful lectures you've seen this morning. Now, uh, if I may add a very, very small compliment to what uh, has been said. So uh, let me just start by, by remind, reminding you of the following fact about uh, plurality permanent functions: is that we, if we have a domain in CN, let's say, uh, excuse me, bigger. What? Can you write a little bit? Ah, I hope I can. Let's see. For example, omega. In <laughs> CN, <laughs> the unit, unit ball or some, some open set, and then we have a function phi, which is in the set of plus harmonic functions on, on omega. But then, uh, so as the draw explained, uh, this, this verifies the following two conditions is up to semi continuous. And satisfies the mean value inequality. Okay, so uh, so and as a, as a consequence of these two these two uh, requirements, which are part of the definition, this means that phi for, for any x in our domain, the value of phi of x is uniquely defined. Okay, so it may be minus infinity, but uh, but uh, this value is is defined in a unique manner. It's not like uh, for L1 functions, which are de defined almost everywhere and so forth. There's a unique uh, value assigned to each point of uh, of um, uh, of omega. I mean, I hope you understand what properly what what, I try to, what I'm trying to say here. So uh, so. Uh, <coughs> Yes, well, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let me, let me start, let me re rewrite the, the, the last statement that Christian put on the board. So, the, the setup was as follows. We had a map which I denoted by P from X to Y, an algebraic fiber space. And then we have a line bounded which is endowed with a metric HN. Which can be singular, but uh, the, the, the assumption throughout this talk will be that uh, the curvature is always uh, positive in the sense of current. So the curvature of L with respect to this metric, as it was discussed this morning, in, in the sense, in a in, in weak sense. And then, uh, so um, the, the result I'd like to discuss next is the following. So the push forward P star of omega relative tensor L, tensor the multiplier ideal shift by F is so is well, okay, so uh, this can also explain how to construct a metric on this uh, object so it's uh, semi-positively curved So, 
again, so the dramatic H can be would, would be in general singular, and then semi positive curve is, as you saw this morning, is simply that the logarithm of the, of the norm of the local sections of the dual of this one is a plus harmonic function. All right, so uh, so let's see what uh, what we what we seen so so far. <coughs> um, so already discussed. Well, the, the important uh, fact was that the definition of the of the of the of this metric on some nice open set. All right. So we we had a, let's say y zero here inside y, which is an open set. That's called nice. <laughs> Subset where the metric H has a very explicit, a very, a very explicit uh, expression. I mean, so um, so um, what I will uh, try to explain to you next is that um, so the, what is, what would be the, the scheme of the proof? So the first point would be to show that uh, to show that um, given any local section, let's say G in gamma of V and F D one, we have so the function. log of the absolute value of the normal G square with respect to the dual metric is plus harmonic. PSH, so again V is some small open set sitting inside YZ. Okay, so so again the metric was defined only on some some uh, some open set here, but uh, then what um, we will have to, to do next would be to show that, in fact, this extends as a, as a semi-positively semi curved singular Hermitian metric on the whole space on Y. So then extension across the singularities. Okay. So, so somehow, that the proof goes like this. On the nice open set, we can do something. And this improves the situation, the, the regularity properties of the metric quite a lot. And then, on the, and then um, we'll evoke some, some um, abstract argument if you want, in order to, to show that this extends across the, the singularities of the, of the map, on, across the complement of this map. Okay? All right, so let's start with, uh, with the first point. So again, as you already guessed by now, what I will do in the next hour would be to discuss the proof of this to some extent, and then to, to explain some, uh, some application. For example, the construction of a metric here on the relative kinetic bundle twisted with L. The construction of the metric was already explained, but what I will try to convince you is that this statement implies the fact that the metric here is semi-positively semi -positive curved as well. And then um, I will try to make the link between this, this result and the classical, uh, the classical results in, uh, in uh, complex analysis concerning the plus harmonic variations of verbal kernels. Okay, so uh, let's start with this, um, with this first point. So we should, so for, for this, one has to show that um, uh, the, the function logarithm of the norm of G square with respect to the dual metric is upper semi-continuous <coughs> and mean value, satisfies the mean value inequality. Now, the upper semi-continuous part, I will just uh, skip it. 
and uh, and um, but I will give you an excellent reference. So um, <laughs> I promise uh, I promise Christian that I will not say ten times how beautiful his paper with uh, Michna Popa and um, Christopher Hecken is. I just say it once. If you really want to understand uh, uh, some, uh, if you really want to, to, to look deeper into this into these results, probably one of uh, the excellent advice I can give it to you is to consult the paper of uh, Hecken, Popa and Schnell. It's really very, very, very well written. And I say this even when Christian is not in the audience. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so for the upper semi-continuity, um, I will not say. Uh, uh, Say anything. So let's see how we go about the mean value inequality. So this would be a consequence. Of the um, uh, optimal. Of the Takagoshi theorem. Meaning the, the, the statement with, with, the, with the optimal constant. The, the extension of. Um, Sections of the sections of the uh, adjoint line bundles with the optimal constant. So how how does this work? So let's say that um, we have a disk. So let's say this is the simple unit disk inside uh, our domain V here, and then the the, the norm of G. At zero, we just write it like this, is the simply given by the G of alpha. Well, so here I have, a, I have a complex number, right? Not a value, where alpha is a section of F at zero. Okay, so it's the sum. So given that I'm on this very nice um, open uh, subset, this is. Um, this would be a uh, L2 holomorphic section here. So that H0 of x, we just write it x0 and omega x0. This will be L. That's the with the multiple ideal sheet. Now, the, the minimal extension, the, the optimal of Sabataki Koshi theorem, gives us a section. So here is the is the, where, where something is really happening. That this this uh, section which computes the norm of G at zero. So this one can be extended in an optimal way. So there is a section S in uh, H naught of let's say um, this. So the uh, the section of F over this such that. So two things, so that, of course, here, the norm of alpha, well, let me just put it like this, the norm of alpha is equals 1, <coughs> such that uh, 1 over pi times the integral of the disk of the norm of s square mu is less than 1. OK, so, so here, I should have the, the value the norm of S on the on the corresponding fiber, but since that norm, the norm in question equals to one, so S over the central fiber equals uh, alpha, and then uh, and then uh, so here the, it is that the, the norm on on the shift F on the vector bundle F because it's a vector bundle when restricted to that uh, open set, and then we have this this property here. So when we look at this uh, this inequality, it looks like uh, some opposite uh, goes in, a, in the opposite direction with respect to the mean value inequality, right? So the value at the center is greater than the average, the average of the norm. But this is good luck for us because uh, in order to compute the norm of g, we have to divide with this quantity, right? So the the norm of g. So uh, we have the norm of G with respect to the dual metric is greater than well the action of G 
on S, so the the actual value of this the holomorphic function, which is defined on the on the list, divided by the norm of S. Okay, so we have this point wise inequality. This is the, the soup of all those uh, of the quantity here, so definitely it's true on any on each point of, of the list with equality at the origin. Okay. And then well I just take the, the log wave and I uh, play a, a little bit around with this that's what I do next. So this means that um, this implies that the logarithm of the norm of G is greater than uh, log <coughs> of the of this holomorphic function minus the logarithm of the norm of S squared. And then let's integrate this over the over the unit disk. So uh, by integration, so one over by and uh, the average of the quantity I have here with respect to the Lebesgue measure. So this would be greater than the average of this quantity. Minus, uh, minus what? Minus this one. Mm -hmm. Find the integral of the, of the list of log of the norm of S squared integrated with respect to the value. Okay, so I did basically nothing. I just wrote the inequality between these quantities and integrated it. Now here is the, the quantity that we want to prove satisfy the mean value inequality. Here is the log of some holomorphic function, and this one is pure harmonic, so this is greater than the value at the zero, which is simply the logarithm. The norm of G at zero. Okay, so here I use the mean value inequality for this. This would, this I should I should have written here the, the value at zero of this holomorphic function, but the value at zero is exactly uh, the norm of G at, uh, at the origin. And then I have this one, minus one over pi, integral over this to log of the norm of S squared over mu. But then now we are really done because, uh, because uh, this, uh, the logarithm, as you definitely know, is the concave function. So with the concavity of log, this tells us right away that the, the integral over the disk, one over pi, log of the norm of s squared in u, is less than the logarithm of what you have inside. And what I have here is the less than one, because uh, this is how I construct the extension. So this is less than one, so this is less than zero, definitely. Okay, so so this term is out, right? So it's uh, it's, it's opposite, it's positive. So this is this is greater than uh, log g of zero, which is what we wanted to prove. Okay, so the drawer and Christian insisted on the fact that for the optimal version is really important in the application. This is why it's important. Simply because if you have not one but two, this beautiful scheme doesn't work anymore, right? You are out. <laughs> right. Okay, so I'm sorry, it may be disappointing, but uh, I mean, <laughs> everything is a consequence of, uh, of this, uh, this, this result, of, uh, of this um, optimal extension. So let's see what about the, 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 the extension property of the metric. So like I try to, to, to say here, once once is plus harmonic, uh, we, we gain in regularity for the for the for the for this um, uh, singular metric. So 
for the for the moment we know that so we have the function so now I'm getting to the second point so uh, we have a function which for t associate lower of um, absolute value of g at some point t on the base is defined and to the above only uh, on let's say v minus sigma so, so again here the notations are as follows. So V, so this would be um, open set inside Y, and then the sigma is Y minus Y zero. So <coughs> this is the complement of the nice locus. So this would be the bad guy, right? So we, we try to see that this function extends across the, the similarity here. I can ask this. Please go ahead. So suppose that instead of pi, you had two pi there. Yes. So you go all the way down almost to uh, the bottom there. Right? No, you can't because you when you when you apply right there, right there, where you come. Here? Yeah. So up to here, it's okay. Right? Yes. Now you have one over two pi. No, no, it's the same line. One minus one over two pi. Okay. Let me just put it here for a second. Yes. So now. Um, you can still talk about it, 1 over pi times, uh, I see, okay. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when, when you apply yes inequality, the mass of the measure should be 1, right? This is why it's in you know, that's okay. Hmm. Yeah, so where was I? All right, so so now I, I have an, I have, so here an uh, open set V. And I have this bad locus uh, sigma, and I want to convince you that the, that this function is bounded. So, so the, what is the principle, which is a, a sort of uh, extension extension um, uh, result of type uh, part of Riemann for for plus boundary functions. So let's say that we have, uh, as in this situation, so let's say we have some some function phi, which is plus the harmonic on um, V minus sigma, which is bounded from above. Bounded from above. So meaning that there is, there is, there is a constant such that the value at, that at each point of this uh, complement set is smaller than uh, this preassigned constant, then um, phi extends to a boundary function on the whole set B. Okay, so so once we have a, a, a function which is boundary outside some some uh, set, and here are the, the sets which we rather are uh, analytic sets, so this is why I don't um, say anything about this one. So uh, what would uh, what will happen is that across codimension two such sets, I don't need any kind of condition here. It extends automatically, but across the divisors, this is uh, where I have to say something to you. Okay. So it, uh, the, the extension property will follow if I'm able to produce some upper bound for the for the for my function here. Let's see how to do that. <laughs> so let's fix some point here. Why, let's say, why infinity on this uh, set the sigma? So fix. I keep on forgetting to write y, but you don't care. <laughs> fix y infinity. <laughs> On sigma, uh, and then uh, a sequence, 
and, and then uh, what, what I want to, to say is that uh, is that uh, I have to show, show that the, the supremum of the normal G square for T belonging to V minus sigma. So when I say that at least a point, I, I, what I mean is that I will be I will authorize to restrict V in in a neighborhood of, of this point here. So this should this uh, should be smaller than some constant c. Okay, that's what I, that's what I, uh, we have to do. And then so let's consider a sequence of points. <coughs> oh, maybe not yet. The sequence of points. But then let's consider uh, a point y. in uh, D minus sigma. And then uh, the norm of G with respect to the term at the point Y square. So this is already defined, right? So this, this would be achieved by some uh, some section of uh, S. So uh, this would be like the absolute value of G acting on S. Well, at the point Y, well, I don't know, to put the here, that's it. Where S, as before, is some local uh, section in this, uh, in, in the germ of S at, at, uh, at the point Y. And then uh, the norm of S square at the, at, at the point, at this time, with respect to the magic H, is equal to 1. Okay, so so um, uh, for each point we have this uh, this uh, um, this uh, section which achieves the, the the norm, and then what we have to do will be to show that uh, will be to show that uh, the the values so claim. So if we believe what what we stated here that the few ones, this would mean that uh, this would mean that the uh, G S in the value is bounded from above. For any set for, for, for any section S in this in this set. Right? So for each point we have produced some section with this property, and then uh, what we want to say is that there is this, uh, there is, well, okay. excuse me, so, so um, the point is that there is some constant C such that uh, G acting on S is less than C for any such uh, section S as, as above, okay? If we are able to, to produce such a pronoun, then that's exactly what what um, what is that means. C independent of y. Exactly, exactly. So here I can draw C independent of the points. Because of course this is a holomorphic function for each point the I get a constant, but the, the, the name of the game would be to show that the bound is independent of that point. Now for this, the, the, there, is a, there is a little fact from, from functional analysis, which is the following. So we have a map from H0 of V and F to H0 of inverse image of V and the canonical omega x twisted with L and with the multiplied yield sheet. And then, uh, so this is just given by the wedge with the inverse image of dt. So dt, so t is a set of local coordinates. Only. Okay, and then uh, and then the map. So here, what we have 
is the the is the set of holomorphic sections of the relative canonical twisted with this. And then when you take the Welsh product with the with um, in the thing of DT, you are in this space. Okay, so we have a well-defined map that um, given by the Welsh with this what comes from, from, from the base. And then the, the fact is that this is a this is a homomorphism for the flash topology so uh, so here um, um, and as, uh, as we know the, the map G sitting in the uh, uh, section of the dual of F is continuous with, with respect to this uh, flash topology so what I'm trying to say here is that uh, is that in fact uh, so thanks to this fact, so it would be enough enough uh, to show that the, the section that we get here, wedge BT, they they have a boundless property. They are uniformly bounded on compact sets sitting inside uh, the inverse image here. Uh, so it's enough to analyze this wedge here plus that. Now here, um, what we do is that, uh, <coughs> so yeah, uh, what I forgot to mention here is that uh, is that uh, once we have this section achieving the value, so we can we can construct uh, as before s in H naught of uh, v and f such that the integral over the um, over the v the now of s square with respect to the Lebesgue measure is less than the constant. <coughs> so yeah. <coughs> So again, how the proof works? Um, for every point here, I have some some section in, in the in the stuff of this sheet achieving the achieving the, the value, and then the, the the restriction of s to the center, to the fiber over y can be extended in the neighborhood by using uh, Osawa Takeyoshi with the property that, that the L2 norm with respect to the Lebesgue measure is bounded by a constant. Here, the, the optimal extension is not relevant. I mean, and then the, the claim is that the claim is that for this linear of sections, for this linear of uh, sections, I have this boundedness property for the for the corresponding homomorphic functions. And uh, like I said, uh, there is this text from functional an analysis saying that in fact. Uh, it, it is enough to analyze the waste product with the inverse of TT and show that this is a, is a bounded semi for the S, for the section that we have produced here. Now, but, but this now becomes really very simple. So let's see, for example, if you want to argue by contradiction, that we have yk converging to the point for infinity, which we, we have fixed there, and such that the norm of g at the yk goes to infinity. <coughs> and if, if this happens, then uh, I want to reach a contradiction, right? And then uh, this would be it. So let's look at the, the corresponding sections sk which were obtained by using, uh, by, by applying Otawa Takeyoshi, then what is this inequality tells me here? So SK wedge pi upper star of uh, dt is simply uh, denoted by beta k. So uh, locally, so th those are top forms on the, on the manifold with, on, on the inverse of v in the values in L. And then what we know about those is that um, <coughs> integral, so 
So if we, we fix local coordinates, so let's say u inside the nearest image of v is the coordinate set. So theta k would be some function fk times dz. And of course, we have to multiply with the we have to trivialize our boundary here as well. But then we just uh, stick with these relations. And then the, the point is that the point is that this inequality here tells me exactly that the integral over the u fk square is less than a constant. And of course this is a this is a bound this Okay? So that's, that's exactly that's exactly the that's exactly the, the point. The, the fact that we can uh, we can um, uh, extend the section which achieve a value at the fixed point doesn't matter where this point sits inside inside the v. We can uh, uh, we can extend this section with L to estimate. And thanks to this fact. The, the conclusion follows almost uh, almost immediately. Okay. Just yes. To make sure I'm not confused. So you, what you're saying is, if you want to extend one of these sections, you can extend it on the family. But the problem is that you can't divide it by people back of dt unless dp is non-zero. Okay. But yes. but you get the uniform bound away from there. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So so another way of saying is that this one so beta k will converge to some form that are, uh, let's say, infinity, right? Because you have the, all the little bounds that, that you want. And this one, you write it, uh, you can write it as S infinity, which pi plus star dt, right? And then, so the, the fact is, so th this is what is expressed here, that in fact the sections, SK, converge to this S infinity with respect to the Fischer topology. Yeah. And this is why this is why we, we, we achieve a contradiction because g is supposed to be uh, g is supposed to be continuous with this topology, but in fact the value here would be plus infinity. Okay, so yeah, that, that's uh, somehow the end of the, this sketch of the sketch of the proof. As you can see, this is uh, simply a, a more or less direct uh, um, consequence. This is a consequence of the of this um, extension theorem of authoritative uh, Oshi with optimal constant. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please go ahead. Um, when you extend Sy or Sj, mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that maybe the, the locus where you can extend it shrinks and shrinks. No, that is not true. Because, uh, because, it's um, so, okay. The, the point is that the family is set to D, yeah. and then you have the family over it. Yeah. Well, so, uh, and uh, if V has some convexity property, let's say that it's simply a ball, uh, then uh, it doesn't matter where is the point you have your section on, on the fiber, you can extend it uh, as well from, from here to okay. from anywhere. So it's not, uh, V doesn't, doesn't change it. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's see what I wanted to, to say next. So, uh, so um, some corollaries. So the, the first one would be so the construction of a metric. Well, maybe metrics. Properties of the metric on. Um, On uh, the relative chemical boundary, tensor to n. Again, the, the, the setup is absolutely the same uh, as before. So, uh, my point is that once you have the semi positivity of the curvature for this one, then you can infer something about the metric. Um, Christian mentioned on, on the relative chemical boundary distribution L on the on the manifold X. 
So now, uh, this can explain to you how to define the metric here in uh, intrinsic terms. Now I will do something absolutely horrible. I will define it for you in local coordinates. So let's see how it looks like. So let's say that we have uh, here u inside uh, x. This is a local set. And then uh, let's say that this one projects into V by my map, uh, by our map P, and where V is uh, as well a project of state. And then let's say that uh, L restricted to U is trivial. We fix uh, some trivialization for L. And here, coordinates z, let's say z1, z, let's say, uh, n plus k, and t, which is t1 after tk. So those are, those are coordinates on u and on v. Now, once we fix this data, I should be able to tell you what is the, the, the expression of the metric here. And the expression of the metric is uh, very simple. So that phi relative, say, in the of the metric on this bounded at some point, let's say z, now we set. So it's a logarithm of the supreme. <coughs> so here I have u wedge p upper star t t divided by z. Well, where the norm of u, the norm of u at the point uh, protection of z is at most one. Okay, so this is uh, the local expression of the metric. Uh, Christian uh, defined it for you, and again you see this is the only defined on the, on the so-called nice uh, open subset of, of y. So the the following. Uh, so we have the following claim. Is that in fact that this defines so uh, phi relative is closer than one. So here, so something really nice is happening, meaning that uh, meaning that when you look uh, when you look at this one restricted to a phi plus x and you look at the phi by x p. The, the fact that the restriction of this to the, to the corresponding fiber is plus to only that's not very surprising, right? Because what we have here is, uh, is the simple geometric given by some holomorphic sections of the fiber. But the surprising fact is that, that you have uh, the convexity, you have the plus to first harmonicity in the direction in the direction of the base, in spite of the fact that when you do this uh, normalization here, normalization is a C infinity operation, and usually this is very this is uh, very contradictory with the um, holomorphicity. Right? When you when you do some orthonormalization properties, usually this is uh, this never has a corresponding variation, but it, still it is the case here. Okay. Now the good news is that this is the immediate consequence of the, of what uh, we've done so far. Let me try to explain you that. So um, consider, so at least I will, uh, I will um, explain you that uh, mean value in quality part. <coughs> so consider the functional um, <coughs> let's say uh, sign which acts on which acts on sections u at some point t is a simply uh, by, by this expression. So u wedge dt by dt divided by dt. Oh, that's, that's, that's. Okay, so this is simply uh, evaluation map. Well, at some point gamma of t, where gamma Gamma is a local section of the map P. 
Okay, so so uh, for each t, I have uh, some assigned value here, gamma of t, and then uh, what this function does for you? Well, it evaluates the, the section u at this point. As you you will recognize here that I simply um, this is a this is a way of trivializing the the relative fundamental bundle, and that's it, that's exactly the the norm, the absolute that um, the expression of that the corresponding function associated to this with respect to the trivialization in question. Okay. So this is a holomorphic. Uh, so the C is just at one point. It's no, no. So, so at one point. It's evaluation at if you want at one point, but the, the point is moving. So it, yes. it, 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 for each point, it's a different function. Well, uh, functionally, so it should uh, should act on. The, um, right. and, and should be so I mean I, I have to tell you how this acts. Uh, th this is a should be a homomorphic function, right? So I have to know you. Exactly. So it, it's a local section of the dual, right? It's a particular example of a local section of the dual bundle. So. In order to to have such a section down, you really need to stay where the p is non-zero. Exactly. So I, I need to have this local uh, local section. Uh, yeah, you're right. Now, uh, so I know that in fact um, by the previous result, I know that the, the log of the normal side is the geometry square is plus is plus one normal. But uh, that's exactly what uh, what uh, that's the discussion of the metric. So, as a very particular consequence of of the same positivity of this one, we get we get the, the, the fact that the metric we, we have on the relative point of bound of this result n is pretty harmonic. And the way of doing it is by looking at by looking at the, the evaluation at some point functionals. Okay. So and then. Uh, So I have not discussed uh, the, the the fact that this is uh, alpha semi continuous, and I and for the extension property. So because so far we only defined it on uh, on the set y zero. The extension property is again a consequence of the Sawa Takigoshi. So I will not uh, discuss this that one either. But let me um, make a remark here that um, that in fact with this result. Uh, the, the fact that uh, <coughs> the positivity of the curvature of uh, omega relative tested with L can be expressed <coughs> by simply saying that, that the, we have a pre-symbolic variation of fiberwise Bergman kernels. By saying that that the fiber wise Berman kernels have um, a pretty harmonic variation. So again, here what uh, what we have is uh, functional, the, the evaluation at the, at the the point gamma of t functional, and the norm of the evaluation at some point is simply the Berman kernel, right? And then uh, and then uh, what the, the content of this uh, this result is that as you move from one fiber to another, the corresponding Berman kernels are they have a pre-symbolic variation. So what what I would like to say here is that uh, is that. In fact, this is a this is a result which is uh, which has a correspondence in uh, in the classical uh, uh, several complex variables as follows. So um, so we have a this is the corresponding uh, maybe a parallel result in um, 
several complex variables, which is uh, the, the following. So we are giving ourselves a domain inside, let's say, uh, C times Cn. C times Cn and uh, the projection on the first variable. So this D is supposed to be um, bounded. And then see the convex. Okay, so this is just a technical uh, technical um, uh, notion. I will not give it here, but um, but for example, if you take a, you know, a ball inside the C that I see, and you definitely have that uh, property. So now I'm giving myself also a plus one function on this domain, <coughs> and uh, and um, then for each t. I will define the kt of uh, z. So now t is in the base, and z is in the fiber, and the other t in, in the t. So it will be the, the um, soup of the f of z square where f, where f norm of f at t is at minus 1. Okay, so this is the Bernard kernel uh, corresponding to the to the to this situation where the norm here is simply the integral of a dt, which is the inverse image. Dt. The, the norm of the holomorphic function in question, explanation one is fine. Integral is with respect to the Lebesgue Okay, so it's a soup of all holomorphic functions which are L2 with respect to this weight. And uh, as, uh, as uh, the weight moves, then the, 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 the everything is changing, right? Here. And the, the point is that we have the following theorem, um, which is due to my time in Yamaguchi at the beginning of the 2000, is that in fact uh, the function T and z to log the p of z is to its normal So this is exactly the, the same result as the one claiming the, the positivity of the curvature here, but uh, it, it is a corresponding result in the several complex variables. So okay, so those even guys, if those guys proved that when n is one, the actual theorem is there and something. All, all right, so so <laughs> All right, so, so uh, by uh, the result of those, those persons, you are absolutely right. The, the, um, okay. the, the, the fiberwise Bermakana has a log with the uh, variation. And uh, so my, my point was that uh, this is exactly the, if you want, the, the domain, the domain um, correspondent of the, what we have on the right geometry. Okay, so somehow this is a very, very uh, interesting thing for me, at least, to, to say that um, um, the same phenomenon that you have here in, in the, for the domains in Euclidean in, uh, in spaces, you have the, the same thing uh, in uh, the context of uh, algebraic geometry. Okay, so maybe one last thing. which I would like to, to mention here to you <coughs> would be uh, about the pluristic harmonic uh, variation of <coughs> pluricanonical forms for, for the for the bundle of pluricanonical forms so the um, so in algebraic geometry if you want one rather has the sections of uh, omega uh, this will be L if you want to the power m. So now the, the question would be how to hook up a metric which takes those sections into account. So now for what we saw for m equals to 1 was that it is possible to, to get a metric which uh, on, on, the, on, on the very generic fiber we know very well how does it looks like is the, the Bernard kernel if you want associated with the so corresponding to the um, Data which is there. Now, for a, for a, a arbitrary m, what would be the, the, the situation? So, in general, the, 
in general, the, the one can uh, one can measure the norm of a, of a section here. So, if I let's say n relative at some point uh, z, so my point is that we can have a similar formula as here, provided that we modify, we, we, we replace this with the same norm that the Christian mentioned, so the lower of the supreme of u, which p star bt times that m, divided by dz times that m, so m, because we want a section on, on the, uh, I want a metric on the omega relative tensor L, which is induced by those sections. And the supremum is for the U, uh, let's say, L2 of M square is at most 1. Where again, the norm here, integral of xy, so uh, at the point Xc, uh, so the norm of U. Uh, L2 over M this is simply U as mentioned as phi L well with the same conventions as in, uh, in the Christian's uh, talk to the power M, I'm sorry ok, so we define the, the, the local weight of the metric by exactly the same formula and then um, the point is that this can be analyzed it can be shown to have a, a semi-positive curvature as we did for the case of the one, because of the fact that we have an Osawa-Takegoshi version, well, optimal optimal Osawa-Takegoshi type of results for this in this setting for pluripanical forms. Okay, so uh, so uh, somehow the whole analysis for the for the convexity properties of this metric can be carried out because of this uh, corresponding statement of whatever technology type in the in the setting of pluripanical forms. But uh, somehow in the last uh, maybe three four minutes I still have, I will try to explain to you how um, uh, how to reduce uh, this one from n to one which was uh, somehow our original motivation for introducing this singular Hermitian matrix. So, um, uh, let me recall you this, the, the following uh, construction. So if V is inside uh, H0 of X, let's say some line down there, uh, let's say E again, E now is a line boundary. On X. Then uh, let's consider the product X plus V and the projection on X. Then, so one can construct on this one. Um, so uh, let's say this is 5. And then we consider the pullback of the boundary E here, and then uh, this one can be endowed with a with a, with a metric produced by uh, by uh, the suspect V as follows. So the norm of some vector V square at some point. Now the point on the base manifold is x and uh, some vector w is simply the norm of V square divided by the norm of W to the power to the corresponding power uh, 2 over M at the points in question. Okay. okay. So we can we can uh, construct a metric on the inverse image of E over the base of the manifold exactly as follows. <coughs> now the the when we consider the, the bundle m times what well, omega relative is equal to m to the power m. 
So locally, we, we consider now, so we can uh, take a basis of sections, so V, the basis of this one, of, uh, let's say, on some open set omega and uh, investment of omega and omega relative With M. And then let's, let's consider the map which we obtain from, from the original one by twisting with V. So this is X plus V, and this is Y plus V. Okay. Then uh, the, the, the point is that the point is that um, on this uh, on this uh, new Family, let's say this is uh, F. Now F is still a proper map, right? And the relative canonical X over Y is simply the pullback. Uh, over star, upper star of omega of the initial relative canonical boundary. And then, uh, and then Somehow, um, when we um, we consider n times uh, omega relative to the n, so when we put like this on the on the new family here, and we put back the the, the longer l, so this uh, pi plus star l to the n. So this is omega relative twisted with L by plus half, twisted with um, omega relative times L to the power n minus one. Well, and then uh, here we have a metric, this one come, coming from L, and this one coming from, from the construction is plane here. I take uh, as a base of sections this. So then this means that for any functional for any functional x i <coughs> in the dual space of this one, so it's omega relative tensor with the M. And then uh, so so for this one we already know that the the, the, the direct image is um, semi-positive, but uh, the, the metric we have here, so we know that so the, the, for any function of psi, the, the uh, psi, uh, or for the evaluation function, excuse me, psi u is the supreme one. Now I'm looking at the point x and, uh, and um, uh, the point so what I'm trying here very hard to say is that is that uh, when we have um, is, is that the norm here the norm of uh, uh, some section u at the point x and b square is simply the, the integral of a uh, This is over the base y and v. It's over x, the pi by x y, u square divided by norm of v to the power two times n minus one over n x minus one minus phi n. <coughs> okay, so uh, so um, somehow when we use uh, this as a, as a norm on the on the um, Direct image, we know that that uh, this has a twist normal variation, and then somehow the point is that uh, the point is that when we uh, restrict to the diagonal, namely when u equals v, then we get exactly the L of n norm here. And this is uh, this is how uh, this is how uh, one can analyze the positivity properties of these boundaries here. Okay. I'm sorry, I I I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you.
about the last thing that you were talking about? Yes. The proof I know of this thing, also from you, is different. So you use Sue's deformation invariants of Curry genera and Osawa Takeyoshi and some iterative things. Yes, it's is, this, is it the same thing? Um, well, uh, Okay, I'm going to understand the question. Can you repeat it, please? So they, you're, you're saying that you want to construct a met an Osawa Takegoshi type result for these LP norms. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That's right. So I've, you, you and Bo proved this years ago yes. by another construction, like an yes. iterative construction that uses a deformation invariant. Yes, that's, yeah. And that's I'm that's asking that. if this is, ends up being the same thing. Um, no, no, no. It's really no, different. It's really different, right? Yeah, I mean, here, here, the, the, the deformation of the are now basically plays no role because you... Well, it played a role before, right? Right, but then, then you want a much more refined information. You want to know something about the special, the special fibers, no? Here, you just restrict yourself to the, um, to the, to the open set on which you control basically everything and then you explain it. So it doesn't matter who the set is. Once you know that the complement is uh, an algebraic set, then you are good. Yeah, so maybe what, what I'll explain uh, uh, later on would be uh, some kind of application of this method to later the conjecture that uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, Christian mentioned. Okay. Other questions? Well, so since, well, are there other math questions? <laughs> so since this is 